best. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here. It's Lavender here and today I am doing another true crime case. Today I am doing the true crime case of the acid lady aka Larissa Schnauzer. I don't, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not really good with names. So let's get started into this true crime video. So this case has been featured in a number of media and TV shows. It has been featured on Dateline NBC, Snapped, Deadly Women, Deadly Wives, and Sins and Secrets. So let's get started into the background of the killer. So Larissa Foreman was born on January 1st, 1960 and grew up on a farm in Clarence, Missouri. She went to attend the University of Missouri studying biochemistry. Well, working at a nursing home, Larissa met Timothy Schober, who was attending nursing school. In 1982, the couple married. They had a daughter together, Kristen, and in 1985, followed by a son, Tyler, in 1990. In 1989, the family moved from West to Fernesco, California, where Alyssa took a job in an agricultural research lab. She later went on to open her own laboratory, science laboratory, in Central California Research Labs. The family was able to move to a larger home in Clovis, California in 2000. By 2001, she was earning twice um, the amount of Tim's annual salary. And here is the background of the events leading up to the murder true crime case points. So let's get started. By 2001, the marriage had deteriorated and had gone and grew sour. Larissa often complained about Tim's incompetence and had an affair while at a conference in Chicago. In February 2002, Larissa filed for divorce. Larissa and Tim fought over custody of their son, Tyler, and the splitting of their joint assets. Larissa was eventually awarded primary custody Tyler and was allowed to stay in the couple's family home. Tim moved out into a condominium. In, on the morning of July 10, 2003, Tim Staffner was supposed to meet with a co-worker for breakfast, but he never showed up. Later that day, he was supposed to retrieve you know, son from Relosa, but again, he never showed up also. Larissa immediately became the prime suspect in the investigation and her estranged husband's disappearance. She was initially questioned and interviewed by the Clovis Police Department, but was not charged because they didn't have any evidence against her. Later, Larissa and her son took a planned vacation to Disney World and then to Missouri. In the meantime, police interviewed Larissa's co-worker, James Vaughan, who was more than forthcoming in his interrogation interview. During his police in interrogation, James revealed that he and Larissa were responsible for the murder of Larissa's ex-husband. James admitted that on the night of July 9, 2003, he and Larissa lured Tim from away from his home. The pair then used chloroform, chloroform and a stun gun to incapacitate Tim and knock him out. And he went unconscious, then disposed of his unconscious body in a 55-gallon barrel filled with highly corrosive hydro hydrochloric acid. Police searched Larissa storage unit where they found a barrel with the liquidified remains of her husband. Later, Larissa was arrested for first degree murder at the St. Louis airport when she came back home. James Foggin was first degree murder as well as kidnapping, went to trial in November 2006. His defense was that Larissa was the mastermind of the whole uh, murder and he only acted this way because he was threatened um, by Larissa and he was afraid for his life. However, James had already confessed to the crime, which the jury had seen and he had tried to unsuccessfully try to recant his confession about how he murdered um, uh, Larissa's husband. Jurors were shown the video of James's police interrogation where he is sh shown saying, I held the barrel up for her, put him in, poured all the solution, and she, like, she couldn't stand it. So she said, put it on. The lid is on. So I helped her put the lid on and put it in the shed. He was acquitted of kidnapping, but he was found guilty of first-degree murder. And um, despite jurors' pleas for leniency, he was sentenced to life without parole. Larissa's murder trial began on October 22, 2007. Her trial had to be moved from Clovis, California to Los Angeles due to pre-trial publicity, publicity. She had been dubbed the Acid Lady by various media news outlets in F Fernando. Prosecutors stated how Larissa had access to all the chemicals used in the murder being that she was a biochemist in a research lab to do this crime and that her motive was financial because she was sick and tired of her husband. 
Her daughter, Kristen, gave a victim's impact statement. You've given up all rights as a mother, wife, daughter, friend, and woman. You're a disgrace to this family, a pitiful excuse for a human. I pray you're continually haunted at night by the sight and sound of my father fighting for his life last breathing moments on this earth. I hope you toss and turn of horrible nightmares, visualizing the horrific act of violence you have just committed. Her testimony that she talked about in the court case saying how she was innocent um, seemed to have not swayed the jury at all. She was found guilty of first degree murder and with the special circumstance of financial gain and on Mar I mean, on May 16, 2008, Larissa was sentenced to life in prison without parole. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye guys, next video.